If you wanna make awesome videos, you don't need all the newest cameras like the Canon R5 or the Sony a7S III. This is the Sony a6000, a camera released in 2014 that you can get used on eBay for under $500. And in my opinion, this is the best camera in this price range that you can get. Ultimately, the camera you use isn't what creates awesome videos. I believe you have greatness inside of you that can be released through video. Even the seven-year-old discontinued camera is still capable of putting out professional level videos even today. But what I'm gonna to talk to you about in this video applies no matter what camera you're using. Go ahead and follow and subscribe if you're ready to draw from the vision already inside of you and learn the technical aspects of bringing that vision to life through film and video. Ready to get started? The first tip I've got for you to create epic videos on the A6000 is to lower your f-stop. And to do that, you're gonna have to shoot on manual. Now, getting your exposure manually is a super important part of creating professional images. Lowering your f-stop is gonna give you awesome images like this instead of images like this. It's gonna separate your subject out from your background by throwing your background out of focus and isolating your subject to give you an awesome cinematic look. I know shooting a manual can be super intimidating, especially if you've never done it before, but it's super easy as long as you get the three foundations down. The first, the shutter speed. It's how quickly the shutter in the camera is physically moving to take the picture. So a higher shutter speed, like one over 600, the shutter is going very quickly. At one 600th of a second, it's taking that picture. And it's gonna do that 24 times every second for the entire video. Now, if you lower the shutter speed to something like one over 50, which is what I recommend you shoot at if at all possible, then it's gonna allow more light to come into the sensor. It's gonna expose the sensor for longer, which is gonna give you more motion blur in your shots. Everything's not gonna be so jittery and sharp. It's gonna look a lot more natural if you're shooting at one over 50. Now, your f-stop, like I already said, is the aperture. It's how wide open your lens is. So if you're shooting at something like 2.8, it's gonna open that lens way up and it's gonna blow out the background. Because it throws the background more out of focus, it draws the eye more into the subject and it gives you a more visually appealing shot. The last thing is ISO. This is how you adjust the brightness within the camera. It's adjusting how sensitive your sensor of your camera is to light. So when you jack up your ISO, it's making the shot brighter. But as you do that, you're adding more grain and reducing the quality of the video. So you want to keep your ISO as low as possible while still getting a good exposure in your camera. Now for everything you do when you're shooting in manual, you're going to be playing with these three settings to nail in your exposure. You want to keep your shutter speed around 1 over 50, your f-stop as low as possible, and your ISO as low as possible. Now sometimes if you're shooting in a dark environment, for example, you're going to have to turn your ISO up to correctly expose. Or if you're shooting in a really bright environment, you might have to turn your shutter speed up to closer to 1 over 600, 1 over 1,000, even 1 over 2 or 4,000. But if at all possible, you want to keep your f-stop as low as possible as low as your lens will let it go. Keep your lens as wide open as possible to blow out the background and create a really visually interesting shot. Now, ideally, instead of moving your shutter speed around, you're gonna be using an ND filter, which is kind of like sunglasses for your camera. But if you don't have an ND filter, it's always best to move your shutter speed before you move your f-stop. Now, when you get the Sony a6000, it's gonna come with this kit lens. This is a 16 to 55 millimeter, f3.5 to 5.6 variable aperture lens. Now this can absolutely give you awesome shots, but I'm gonna recommend that at some point you start building out your lens kit and getting some lens that you can open up even wider and stop your aperture down even more on. This is the Sony 50 millimeter f1.8. You can go all the way down to f1.8 on this lens and really separate out your background from your subject. The Sigma 56 millimeter f1.4, 30 millimeter f1.4, and 16 millimeter f1.4 are also great lens options for this camera. I just want to give you one more quick little bonus tip, which is when you're recording a video, if you want to really make your subject look awesome and really blow out that background, really make your shot look good, you're going to want to back up and zoom into your subject. You can already see how much nicer the shot looks. Everything's blown out behind me. It's a real crisp image. This is called changing your focal length is what zooming in is called with these kind of lenses. Now this is something you really want to experiment with to see what kind of focal lengths you like shooting on and what the different focal lengths are doing to your videos. Just play around and try zooming in and zooming out and seeing what that's doing to your image. My second tip for you is to shoot in slow motion. Slow motion always makes everything look better. Especially with a camera like this that doesn't have any in-body stabilization, that slow motion is gonna help take out the shakiness from your shots and give it a real smooth look. Normally when you shoot video, you're gonna be shooting in 24 frames per second. 
That's gonna give you a really nice natural look to your footage. But when you wanna shoot in slow motion, you wanna shoot in higher frame rates and then play that back in 24 frames per second. And that's what gives you the slow motion look. So on a camera like this, the A6000, it's gonna let you shoot at 60 frames per second at 1080p. You can then slow that down to 40% speed and get a really nice looking slow motion effect. Now I know frame rates can be kind of confusing. That's why I'm working on a video right now all about the ultimate guide to frame rates to help you make better videos than using the correct frame rates. So make sure you follow and subscribe so you get a notification when that video comes out or go check the channel now and see if it's already up by the time you're viewing this. The next thing that you wanna do to get awesome videos off your A6000, which really has more to do with the whole process of making videos in general than this camera specifically, but it's to think about your lighting and take your lighting really seriously. Lighting can be one of the major things that sets the professionals from the amateurs. And you wanna make sure you give it a lot of thought before making your videos. In an indoor environment like this, where you're gonna set up lights, one of the easiest ways to get a real professional look is by using the three-point lighting system. Setup. With just three lights, you can get footage that looks like this. First, you're gonna position a light a little bit off to the side from your subject to give you a nice key light that's gonna be your primary light lighting the subject. Then you wanna put a light behind them, somewhere around directly opposite of your key light. This is called your hair light and is gonna give you this really nice outline look, this outline that you can see on my right side here. Now that's gonna create a shadow on the right side of my face in between where the key light ends and where the hair light ends. The shadow is what we're looking for because shadows create depth and depth always makes your images look better. Now the last thing that you wanna do, which I now realize that I forgot to do for this video up to this point, is you wanna light your background. You don't light your background, you're just sitting on an empty void like I have been this whole video. Lighting your background will bring more definition to your video and give you a higher quality image. Hence why normally you would do that from the start of the video. Now for your three lights, you can use professional lighting if you want, or you can just use lights from around your house like a desk lamp to recreate the look. You can even just use a window as a key light and forget about the other two if you're in a pinch. Now when it comes to outdoor natural lighting, the biggest thing you wanna think about is the position of the sun. Generally, you're gonna want the sun positioned behind your subject like it is now. If you position the subject so that they're looking into the sun, then you're gonna start getting weird shadows under their eyes and it's not gonna be flattering to the face. You wanna position the sun behind them so that they're comfortable looking at you and so that the sun gives them a nice rim light like you see here and in these clips here. Now the best time to do video is first thing in the morning or late in the evening when the sun is lowest in the sky so that you can position it behind the subject. This is called the golden hour from about 20 minutes to an hour before the sun goes down or after it comes up. This is when you're gonna get your best shots that are gonna look absolutely fantastic. The worst time you can shoot is 12, one, two in the afternoon when the sun is directly overhead. You're gonna get weird shadows under the eyes and everything's gonna look terrible. You can do it if you have to, but if you can, shooting first thing in the morning or late at night is absolutely gonna give you the best experience and the best footage for your videos. Finally, one of the biggest things that you can do to really take your videos to the next level, which again has more to do with the whole process of filmmaking and making videos than the A6000 specifically, is really taking your audio seriously. I know when I first started making videos, I absolutely overlooked this, much like many people do when they first started making videos. But audio is 100% the most important part of your video. Don't believe me? We'll just take a look at this video with just music added to it versus a version of it with music and sound effects and fully added to it. Big difference, right? When you edit your videos, you wanna make sure to watch your video and think about all of the different sounds that are happening. What all's happening and what sounds would that make? For example, a car running, you wanna hear the engine noise, you wanna hear footsteps when people are walking. Anything you can see in the video, you should be able to hear too. Now, as far as getting audio for your videos, you really have two options. Option number one is you can record it yourself. You may have audio already recorded from when you shot the video native into the camera, or you may need to go record the audio separately if you didn't get a good sound into the camera. So you may just wanna use the internal microphone in your camera to record the new audio, 
Or you may even just want to use another microphone, like your phone, to record the wind blowing through the trees or whatever other audio you need to make your video work. Now your second option is to license the audio through a subscription to a site like Envato Elements, which is what I personally recommend. With a subscription like you get to Envato Elements, you get access to a huge library of sound effects, music, and everything you need to take your audio level up a notch in your videos. Now if you apply all the tips in this video, this is the kind of video you should be able to make. Not bad, right? Of course, there's so much more to be learned about the whole process of filmmaking, even using the A6000. But this video is meant to help you take your videos to a whole nother level with not a whole lot of experience. Now, I'm gonna challenge you to go make a video right now. That's the best way that you're gonna learn and get better as a filmmaker is just by making content now. Now, if it's late at night and you're just procrastinating on going to sleep, you can wait for tomorrow. But don't wait for the weekend. Don't wait for something to shoot. Get out there and shoot something today. Shoot something right now. That is the number one thing that you can do to improve your filmmaking and make better videos no matter what camera you're using is to create more videos. You may wanna just watch back through this video real quick and jot down a few notes to use on your shoot, but just let the dog out in the backyard and chase it around with a camera for a few minutes. That's actually a really iconic thing that uh, filmmakers do. They get a new camera, they wanna try it out, and just uh, take some pictures of the dog. Otherwise, just get your camera and get some shots of your car and make a video out of it or go to the park like I did. You've just gotta get out there and start doing it. That's the only way that you're gonna prepare yourself for bigger projects. Because it may feel like, oh, I'm not gonna, no, nobody's gonna wanna see this little video of my dog. No, but you're gonna train yourself. You're gonna train yourself how to use your camera, how to get awesome shots. So when you are doing videos that people are gonna see, they're gonna be so much better because you've had practice, you've been training, and you are ready to make epic videos, even with a camera like the Sony A6000. And once you get your footage captured, you may want some help editing. Well, not to worry, because I've created a whole nother video just walking you through from start to finish, editing in Premiere. I'm gonna walk you all the way through creating your sequence, color grading, mixing your audio, all the way to choosing your codecs and getting your export settings right. Go check it out and follow along while you're editing your own videos. Make sure you subscribe for more enabling content like this. And until next time, know that you have greatness inside of you that can be released through video if you'll apply yourself to learning the craft.